and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. My name is Guy, and today we are answering the question of how do you adjust a pre-made adventure or an adventure that you've planned for more or less players? So you've invited your usual crew around and suddenly they tell you, oh, uh, only one of us or one of us can make it or one of us can't make it. Or uh, do you mind if I bring along my buddy or three that uh, have come into town for the weekend? So there's going to be seven of us instead of five of us. Or there's going to be two of us instead of five of us. Or however the combination might work. So how do you adjust your plan, perhaps on the fly, how do you adjust it? for more or less people. So we're going to look at that today. And the three areas we're going to look at, we're going to look at the impact that it has upon your game. We're going to look at time and how time is affected by this change. And then we're going to look at how to and what to adjust. So stay with us as we start to unpack that. Before we go any further, I just have to say thank you for your feedback on these uh, titles. The feedback was as usual. A lot of people worried this is very distracting for me, which I will slowly get better with it over time. I don't mind doing it. And uh, generally, though, people were quite happy with them. So if we start to move forward, he said, hopefully, and I seem to always forget to do this. If we move forward, adjusting for more or less, when we talk impact, what are more players or less players going to do to your game? Well, the very first thing in terms of impact is the situations are now going to have to change. And by that, I mean that with less players than you had planned, you need to be aware that the situation, the outcome of each of those carefully plotted moments within your adventure are now going to take a little bit longer, a little bit less, but that's time. We're going to talk about that a bit later. But the, 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 the abilities, the skills, the character knowledge and the player knowledge is now going to change. So any of your situations that required a specific player who has a specific character to have that knowledge is going to be changed. It's going to be missing, or there's now going to be more of it. You're going to have more options to play through in these situations. So your situations, you need to look at them and go, if I add more players, does my situation change? Well, the room that you've designed might be too small for them to all actually fit in. Or perhaps it's now too big, uh, so you need to look at that. The interactions are going to change. You have more players, you're going to have more interactions. Less players less interactions and that's really where the biggest impact is with more players some players might sit back and let others kind of move through the questioning phase of npcs and that kind of thing with less characters with less players you have less opportunity for the players to get information there's only two players in your game now all of a sudden as opposed to four well now that ranger who used to get all of your nature checks is no longer there so any information that required a specific uh, way of thinking, a specific focus, if you like, of the player is now gone. NPCs need to adjust. With less players, the NPCs need to give out more information. The players themselves are going to be working as hard as they were before. They might have to try and work harder, but you can't penalize them for having less players at the table. So instead of the NPC just giving out one line of information or giving out information specific to the question asked by the player, the NPC needs to accommodate for the fact that the captain of the starship is no longer there. So that wonderful charisma that normally was available for the captain to use to charm the NPC is not there, and now we're left with this brute. So what is the NPC going to do? How are you as the GM going to adjust that? And we're going to get to that a little bit later. How are you going to change that to make sure that the players still have a good time and don't get penalized for not having players around? With more players, every NPC interaction is now going to affect your time, which we're going to come to a little bit later. Combat, obviously, is going to get impacted. More players means longer combat. That's a time issue. Less players means deadlier combat and longer combat too, for a matter of fact. So there's an interesting interplay that needs to happen. So we need to be aware that our combat situation is going to be impacted. And of course, lastly, skills. Skills are going to be heavily impacted. And why? They're just not going to be there. Or 
We're going to have an overabundance of skills. We're going to almost guarantee that every skill challenge, skill check, feat, whatever it is, is going to be represented by more players and that there will be a successful outcome for those. So we need to think about that as well. Why is that going to happen? Because there's just more of them. So time becomes an issue. Time becomes an issue from the interactions perspective. One player character interrogating an NPC might take, let's say, 10 minutes. Three, in, uh, three characters interrogating an NPC might take 15 minutes. Seven might now suddenly take 25 minutes or more if each of them are chipping in with questions, if they're all thinking about things. This won't necessarily happen. Oftentimes, some of those PCs won't be involved in the interrogation. But when you go shopping, you now have more people shopping than you did before. So your time management becomes a really important thing. Combat is going to take forever if you've got seven combatants and you're just going to add more monsters. And you're going to see later on that I say that you shouldn't do that. But seven people rolling dice in whatever system you use is going to slow down the combat. Similarly, fewer characters fighting the same amount of monsters is going to take a long time because they're only rolling a certain amount of dice each round to hit those monsters and to defeat them. So it's a big issue. Your encounters need to be solved from a timing perspective quite carefully. You need to really focus on how do you and what do you take out or add or change to that encounter but quickly, and we're going to look at that in the last section of this video. So, when you have more players, I will always fall back on that out-of-action initiative. Now, it doesn't matter what skill system, what system you're using. Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2, Starfinder, uh, Modiphius system, Conan, for example, White Wolf, it doesn't really matter. I would still, in a large group, have a die that you roll. See, I use the word die. I can use it. Sorry, that's referencing to dice tosser. I stand corrected. I do stand very much corrected on that. Anyway, have a die that everybody rolls, and that determines their speaking order in terms of out of character, uh, out of combat dialogue. So you work through each of these additional people at your table. When you had four players and now you've got seven, you were used to a natural rhythm that kicked in with those four players. There's other three players or even another one player is going to throw you out a little bit. So give them a speaking initiative. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What, what you're in care Just work through them. It will make it more manageable. With less players, your initiative order starts to become less important. If there's only two players, you go, you go, the monsters go however you want to play it out, whatever your, your system works. But then you need to make sure that you are balancing that. You are balancing that with them. Your reaction times become a lot more strained with less players. Less players means the players are moving faster through the story. You as the game master are going to have to keep up and keep on your toes to challenge and keep the ball rolling. More players, there's more debate that goes on between them. They argue over whether they should go left or right at the fork in the road. You, as the game master, have got days to come up with changes and solutions to having more players uh, at your table. So it's, an, it's a benefit, in a way, of having more players because you have more time to react. With less players, you need to make sure that you are planned very well. And this is a point that I need to raise. Don't be afraid of coming to the end of the adventure even though you said you were going to play for four hours and you get to the end of the adventure at the end of two hours and saying guys we've got to a natural concluding point in the adventure the adventure is over your characters can spend the next two weeks doing whatever they like this said the next thing should we wait for the other party members to arrive? So in other words, we finish off the session today, we can sit and chat, we can develop backstories, we can work out stuff, we can play board games, we can do something else for the remainder of our two hours? Or do we start the next adventure? I would advise, of course, that you don't carry on, you don't start the next adventure. If the players who have missed the session have missed it because of a disaster or it's an unusual occurrence, Starting the next adventure and then having them join later on is a bit unfortunate. It's very disjointing. Whereas if you have played the session and you've played it out to its natural conclusion as you planned it, there's no point in dragging it out even longer. 
You can add in a few things if you're good at seeding and if you're good at on the fly sort of developments and things. But if you come to the end, come to the end. Don't be afraid to have to carry on. Now we get to the adjustment phase. This is the bulk really of the video, I suppose, uh, in terms of how do we adjust? What do we adjust? So with less players, we add NPCs. We add NPCs. The players need to get information. So now we go back. There's a video that I made on adjust or, or the roles that NPCs play in your game. The guide, the mentor, the long-term, the supporter. All of those NPC roles you now need to add to your game. You have more players, uh, you have less players. They need help. So I will generally add in more NPCs who are volunteering more information for the less number of players. If I've only got one player, that player is going to be surrounded by four or five NPCs that are going to provide support and guidance. If there are more players, there are less NPCs. Once you get to a point where if there's seven players, you don't need any NPCs aside from the very few that the player characters are going to interact with. And they don't need to advance the story in any shape or form. They simply need to give out as little information as they can, but enough to move the story forward. So you can add NPCs if you have less players. And it's an easy enough situation, unless they're literally out in the middle of the desert. And even then, a caravan of passing merchants riding camels comes across the party and bingo, you have a train line of NPCs who are there to give additional information that the lack of the ranger class or the lack of the doctor in the whatever is now fulfilled by an NPC. And make it easy for the NPCs to join the, the single or the, the lower, smaller group. Don't give them hefty prices for joining. I will join your party for five credits and a percentage of the treasure. Make it easy for the characters to absorb these NPCs and make the NPCs likable. Make us want to engage with those NPCs. So we can obviously also subtract NPCs, as I've said. You can now add a delay. So as I said before, if you come to the end of the adventure, you come to the end of the adventure. Don't drag it out, unless your players are having fun. If your players are having fun, add a delay. Now, adding a delay is an additional encounter. This is with uh, small groups of people. If you wanted to go, go longer, you can add another combat encounter. You can add in a riddle and really let them try and work through that riddle. There's only two or three of them. There's a smaller group, so they can really get their teeth into these kinds of things. And you can find these sort of things easily. Literally Google good riddle or puzzle, and then you can throw that out to, to the characters. And if you're good at seeding, if you're good at ad hocking, adding stuff on the fly, you can add a room that's got a puzzle in this dungeon that they're exploring or in the starship that they're busy going through, wherever the setting might be. So you can add in these delays, which slow out the duration of the journey. You can also use delays if you have an adventuring party of five and let's say two other mates join or three people are not available, whatever. The section that you're going to play through, the adventure section, normally would contain vital information that all the players should know. But with seven players, it disrupts the balance. It's going to be too difficult for you to then account for where those other two characters go if they don't come to next week's session. So you can add a delay. Instead of running the actual adventure that you had planned, if you've got more players, throw in a massive combat that takes two hours to work through because it's so technically difficult and it's challenging and it requires more players to overcome. In other words, don't advance your adventure. Rather, just have some fun moments that prescribe a beginning to the adventure. Or if they're in the middle of the adventure, it's a side corridor, a side adventure, if you like, that will play out with more. With less, exactly the same thing. Instead of them continuing down the path into the dungeon, they find a secret room that leads them into a micro dungeon, a smaller area that they have to work their way through so that by the time that the adventure ends, by the time that your session ends with additional but less people, 
the characters find themselves almost back at the same point that the rest of the party will be at when you start your session again a week later or your next your next session so in other words you delay the adventure long enough that it doesn't actually happen the characters go through a sub smaller phase which with the outcome they end up where they would have started if that makes sense in a bigger group you can split the party even in a small group you can split the party this is basically building in a delay but it's a little bit less obvious and it's a bit more organic splitting up the party means that you're bouncing through different groups it really does slow down in a bigger group if you've got groups uh, let's say you've got seven people and you've got a group of two a group of three and a group of two um, Beth um, if you've got three groups operating and you're bouncing between each of them bounce between each of them that saps a lot of your actual game time now I know it sounds like I'm saying just pause the adventure and don't do anything and just have some fun that's exactly what I'm saying have fun that's the point of the game if adding or subtracting people is going to disrupt going to disrupt your entire session rather pause the session but do so in a narrative way do so so that it feels like the players that did show up are rewarded they've got some treasure they've got maybe a bit more experience points if you're running a system that uses experience points or advancement points whatever you want to call them but they have achieved something so it feels like it was worthwhile playing that adventure but you haven't actually moved the adventure forward you've had fun whilst role-playing which is ultimately the bottom line then the following session, things can resume and you can continue without too much disruption to your ultimate game. Now, this next point, I'm going to lean back. Do not add more monsters, he said backwards. Do not add more monsters, right? If you're going to delay and your delay is a giant combat, then it doesn't matter. You're not adding more monsters. You're creating an entire new combat. But if you've planned an adventure and you want to continue running that adventure, and you've planned for a, a warband of, let's say, six goblins to attack the party, but you now have a party that's double in size. You don't need to double up the number of goblins. That is just going to slow down your combat worse than it had already been done. Increase the hit points, increase the damage, increase the long levity, increase the health, increase the stamina. Whatever your genre, whatever your system, increase the values of those creatures rather than adding in more creatures adding in more creatures like i said is just another whole set of dice that need to be rolled over and above another set of whole dice that need to be rolled it just slows it down so your encounters each encounter if you plan to have three encounters are going to feel like these epically long sessions of dice rolling increase the numbers so the damage is scarier the hit points are the same or slightly more so they can sustain more hits from multiple adventurers but don't change the number of creatures with less players again don't change the number of creatures if you were going to have six goblins and you've now only got two players just reduce the values that those goblins now have so that the two players can feel like heroes and champions for destroying those goblins what also happens is a nice little psychological nudge to the players who couldn't make it now even if it wasn't their fault if you know things conspired against them when they get to that table the next session and the the players who did attend your session go oh we fought off hordes of goblins and we did this we did that and we did the next thing it's going to sound really cool whereas if they say well we had an encounter with two goblins and we we kind of killed those quite you see what i'm saying so by not adding monsters, not changing the monster numbers, but by changing their values, you keep to your original plan. You don't have to suddenly add in 20 tokens onto your battle map if you use a battle map, but you still keep the flavor and the essence of what you were going for. Your stats and maths, that's where your focus can be change those around rather than trying to rewrite your adventure rather than trying to come up with new monsters or or difficulty values your stats and maths those are fairly simple if the challenge was originally 10 and you've now got five players as opposed to three well now the challenge becomes say 15 whatever math system your 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 system uses that's entirely up for you and then of course traps 
traps can be added in. It's all part of this sort of delaying idea of making the game feel like it's a complete adventure, like it's feels as if it was planned, but is something that you've just kind of thrown in there to buy yourself some time to come up with the next encounter or the next situation, but also to get people stuck in. With more people, those traps can be more convoluted. The riddles can be more difficult as multiple people are sitting there trying to think them through. With less players, you can start to look at those traps and reduce the damage, perhaps, or reduce the difficulty of overcoming them. You have less players, you have less skills and less options and less dice rolling, basically, to overcome those challenges. So you need to make sure that those challenges can be overcome. And that, in a nutshell, is how I adjust for more or for less. I don't change fundamental things, I just change the numbers so that the numbers sit in my favor to keep my adventure moving, whether it's moving in a circle so that I don't leave behind the players who couldn't make it, but I still entertain the players who've arrived, or whether it is an advancement, but it's a very slow advancement, so there isn't that much that's been overcome, or even if it is an advancement to a conclusion, but then it is a definite conclusion, and then a new adventure will start again next week when my players return. That's what I generally try to do and try to achieve so that my players don't recognize, they don't even realize that there's been a change. They literally just assume this was all part of the plan. Anyway, until next time, if you are looking for players, head on over to www.rpgtablefinder.com, which is our uh, proprietary website that uh, the Web Goblin Forge cobbled together. And uh, there you'll find all sorts of players willing to play online or around the table in true tabletop role-playing, TTRPG as they call it. And uh, yes, it's sign up, it's all free, the whole process, everything is there. And uh, you can set up your table and set up your game and find like-minded people to role play with. Anyway, until next time, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, am I getting better with these? I don't know. Time will tell. Anyway, until next time, I wish you and yours the very happiest of gaming.